So I'm going to start with a question this evening. How many bridges did you cross on your way to see me? I crossed over 40 on my way from Denver. But I'll bet most of you didn't think about that, unless I would have asked. So we'll come back to that later. I want to introduce you to a young boy, Rolio, and his friend, Gonzalez. Rolio's family are potato farmers, deep in the Peruvian Andes, near a community of Yavina. And like most of, you, of Rolio's classmates, his journey to school includes crossing a bridge. But during the rainy season, there are no braided vines to cross. Two years before I met Rolio, one of his classmates fell from this very crossing and lost his life. And I, had I not had the opportunity to cross that very same crossing, I probably would not be standing here this evening. I believe basic access is a human right. So my story is a little bit longer than that, and it started in 2006. I did something that most engineering students never have an opportunity to do. I wanted to build something. Crazy, right? Thank you. And for me, it was more important than building just something. I wanted to build something very profound and impactful. So I went to Yavina, Peru, with a group of my engineering student friends, and we built a bridge. I ate foods I'd never heard of, danced to music I could not find the beat to, <laughs> and worked side by side with farmers whose native language of Quechua I certainly couldn't understand. But we built a bridge of critical access. Access to school, access to the market, and access to that essential health care that was in the community of Vivina that Rolio and his family before were not able to make it to. But it was through that first experience where I realized what an important piece, important role that essential access can provide in a community. And I decided to dedicate part of my life to solving that problem. I'm Avery Bang, and I'm Executive Director of Bridges to Prosperity, an organization that works in communities like Avina around the world, building pedestrian infrastructure and providing that key access. But normally, I get a lot of these blank stares, like, what do you mean by access? So in order to explain, let's go on a small journey to Gondar to a small village on the east side of the Blue Nile in the highlands of Ethiopia. For the villagers of Gondar, this is how you get across the river. You get six of your best friends to hold the rope as tightly as possible, and you're holding on pretty tight as well, and you don't look down. And mom, I, I didn't actually cross this one, so that's good news. But in 2002, Bridges to Prosperity built our first bridge here, here in Gondar. A steel truss bridge spanning a gap that hadn't been crossed since 1938, when the local villagers self-destructed the multi-arch span in order to stop the Mussolini invasion from crossing through Ethiopia. So for the first time since 1938, those sick, elderly, those having pregnancy complications, they had an access route out of Gondar to the clinic. And for the first time since 1938, children who wanted to go to school past the fourth grade, where primary school stops in Gondar, had an option. So this is typically where the story ends. There's a problem, nonprofit comes in and saves the day, shiny, glossy photos, it's all great, right? But the reality is, this bridge failed. We didn't take account, into account the fact that decades of extreme deforestation had caused erosion, that had filled up many of the, many of the riverbeds, and now the w water crested over the top of this bridge far beyond where it was safe to cross. That bridge was literally ripped from his its hinges. And as a very young, organization, we had a difficult question on our hands. 
are we more accountable to provide access for the community of Gondar? Or are we accountable just to the donors that already received those beautiful photos and that happy success story? And I think one of the tragedies of our industry is that we're so preoccupied with telling the stories of success that we're not able to attend to the reality of keeping our programs moving. I think addressing failure, as well as our successes, is a very important step in the right direction. So, what did Bridges to Prosperity do? Put our heads down, our board of directors said, you're here to provide access. I don't care about the bridge. So seven years later, with the engineering sophistication and experience from bridge, building bridges around the world, we returned. And I had the personal privilege to work with leadership on either side of the river to build the bridge that ended up being longer than a football field. Built only of local materials, using no power equipment, certainly no machinery, and a few weeks in a very flea-ridden tent. But it was a success. Once again, the community of Gondar has that critical access. But as an organization, I think the learning point was so much more significant. What is the promise that we're making? And how can we connect the community of Gondar directly with, back with our beneficiaries, with our donors? So that way we don't have to play that critical keystone role that if we decide not to tell the truth, the community suffers. So Bridges to Prosperity is working very diligently to try to be more open, more honest with, being, with our successes and our failures. How many people go across the bridge site is not something that I can tell you by getting community surveys back. But it is something that I can reliably tell you if I have a remote monitoring device. So we're working with a research team from Portland State University who is developing, developing remote monitoring devices that go directly onto our bridges and give us real-time data, important data. Who is crossing our bridges and when? For example, at, for our bridge in Latanya, Guatemala, peaks at 8 a.m. and at 3 p.m., verify that this bridge is indeed being used for school access. Pretty cool. But to me, it's much more important to learn from not our successes and not the moments when we say, oh, we did this right, but to learn from our failures. When did a bridge get underused? Why? When did a bridge get overused? Or is that bridge even there? And I think what's really, really exciting about this technology is it has far-reaching implications. I see it being useful in the education sector, certainly in healthcare, in local government planning and monitoring. I see all types of projects being radically more efficient because we're able to actually sit down and say how and if their promise is being fulfilled. So, to go back to Bridges to Prosperity, my, my initial experience in Yavina, back to Rolio. This experience was much bigger for me than just building a bridge. It was more than a bridge of cultures. It was more about asking really difficult questions. What is this promise that I have made, Yavina? And how can I make sure that that promise is upheld? So I'll leave you with this tonight. For those of you in the audience, I'd like you to think about what would life be like without that basic infrastructure that we all rely on? What if that water didn't come out of your tap in the morning? Or what if that electricity didn't flip at a switch? Sorry, at a switch. Or what if you didn't have those bridges or those roads that you passed and traveled on to join me here tonight? Think about the role of that infrastructure in being the backbone of both personal and collective progress in, in society. And lean toward your favorite engineer neighbor and thank them, not only for that infrastructure being there, but for being in, uninterrupted for years to come. And to my fellow nonprofit organizations, 
join me in putting our data, our successes and our failures, open to the public. I think if we can create a standard of accountability, we're all going to be better for it. We will learn from one another's mistakes and hopefully not repeat one another's failures. Because I, for one, believe that success and progress are built on the back of failure and not on the replicate. I, for one, <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> um, I'm going to finish that line because it's important for me, but I, for one, believe that progress is built on the back of failure, not on the easy replication of mediocrity. Thank you.